Hi, I'm Jeremy. I'm here at the Air Rat Ridge Zoo at the Ark Encounter. I am here with Matt and Brittany, and they, they, Matt, you oversee the living collections here for the Ark Encounter and the Creation Museum, is that correct? That's correct, yeah. And Brittany, you, you're a zookeeper, so? I am. Cool. So we're here with, who are we here with today? This is Zacchaeus, and he is our plain zebra, or grant zebra. He's currently the only one we have, but, uh, he, when he was by himself, uh, he got a little nervous, so we introduced him to Leah over here, which is one of our, our standard donkeys, and him and Leah have formed a pretty good relationship together, and uh, so they actually get along very, very well. They're both equine kinds, but obviously different species, so it's kind of a neat exhibit as far as the Ark Encounter goes, because it shows that kinds type and the differences within the kinds. Uh, by having the wild zebra and the domesticated right. donkey together. Right, that's really cool. And and that's one of the functions here overall at the Air Rat Ridge Zoo is to kind of show the different kinds that, um, representatives of the different kinds that would have been on the ark. Right. Yeah, and we do that uh, throughout not only the exhibits, but also down here at the zoo by trying to exhibit similar kinds. Like right. we also have, uh, right over here behind you, we also have our ostrich, which is a rat type kind. And then just on the other side of the fence are the emu, which is another rat type kind. Sure. So that's one of the differences that you'll find here at the Air Rat Ridge Zoo and perhaps any other zoo is here you are going to get the biblical perspective in any of the teaching that you're going to see here. And um, that, that's one of the main differences. You're not going to read about millions of years or anything of that nature. Yeah, some of the cool facts is, uh, and one of the things we've done here is zebras are... You know, they are a wild animal, so they are extremely feisty. They're, they're more of a high-risk species to have than, say, a donkey or something. So we've had our zookeepers here um, have worked extremely closely with him to get him to where he's, he's workable like this. We can also now put his halter on and off, which is nice, so we don't have to leave it on him all the time. And, uh, but Zacchaeus, he should live to be 30 years in a wild situation. But in a zoo, a captive environment, these guys can tend to live up to 40 years. Right. And one of the biggest questions we get, are zebras white with black stripes or are they black with white <laughs> stripes? What do you think? Do you have an answer for that? Oh, I think, I think I'm biased yeah. because I've already spot? heard the answer. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is, in fact, uh, black with white spots. Right. Or Stripes, rather. <laughs> Spots on some days, huh? <laughs> yes, right, right. And he is only a year old, so he, he just, uh, in August, turned, turned a year. And you can see on his back here, he's still got some of his full down on him, kind of the, the baby fur. Oh, you want to so, say something? <laughs> he, he's not real talkative. No, I can't eat that. <laughs> well, happy birthday. That's right. So he's we're kind of we're kind of a little saddened by it because he's he's starting to look like a full-fledged adult zebra, and he's losing his his full fur back there. Right, I can understand that. The other thing is too um, with the zebras, the stripe pattern is like a fingerprint. Mm -hmm. So in the wild, they can actually map these guys out, even in big herds, and be able to tell them apart just because of the stripe pattern, because it's different for every single animal. Right. That's cool. So what, what different types of foods do they like to eat? I see they're enjoying their little snack that you're giving them right now. So they'll actually eat grasses and hay. That we, they get hay here, and Zaki gets a zebra mixture that we give him. But in the wild, they'd probably snack on mainly grass. Right. So do, you, do they have any, like, special treats that they get that they really enjoy? He really likes his carrots. Carrots. <laughs> he <laughs> loves his carrots. <laughs> How does he do on apples? He'll eat them, really? but <laughs> he prefers carrots. Yeah, there, and there are certain things you think that they would gobble up and, and eat, and they kind of go, eh, not right. so sure about that. So they're particular about their food. Yes. <laughs> and the zebras are... They're a, they're a grazer. Most of your equines are grazers, which means they they nibble on the grass and maybe low-lying shrubs. Your browsers, sure. 
tend to be more the type that eat from the trees and, and larger shrubs. Right. So these guys are grazers. So it's a little more challenging sometimes in that case to, to find things that are uh, appealing to them. Mm -hmm. So if you have any questions, feel free to c make a comment there and uh, we'll answer them here today. And then also for any information about the Ark Encounter, we ha even have some information about the Air Redwood Zoo on the Ark Encounter website. So go to arkencounter.com and uh, you can get more information there including about tickets and all that information. And don't forget, if you're interested in coming to the Ark Encounter, don't forget about the Creation Museum as well because while we have an Air Redwood Zoo here, we have a petting zoo at the Creation Museum with different types of animals again and a different type of experience. So I definitely recommend that. And um, zebras wanting to come and say hi for us. So, so if Sarah you Joe is our vet tech here. Um, and we do regular health checks with him, so it's very important for us to get him used to us handling him. Right. We also have a farrier that comes out, so he trims all our donkey's hooves, and he also trims his hooves. So we have to get him good with touching his feet and. Right. All that maintenance. So. Are there any enrichment activities that you tend to do with these animals? Uh, we have puzzle feeders that we put a bunch of produce in. It's basically a bucket with holes in it. Mm -hmm. So we put a bunch of produce in there and then they roll it around here so they can get their treats out. Right. So We also have, uh, the there's some natural goat naturally uh, growing goat grass around, mm -hmm. which is a really good uh, browser plant. Uh -huh. And so we can actually cut that, hang it on the fences and stuff, and they will, they will actually uh, browse that on their own. So sure. we can just kind of hang it in here and they'll, they will feed off it as they like. Was she getting you excited? Was she getting you excited? So, but these two is a, is a really cool combination that we have. It's worked out really well for him. He was uh, before far too excitable to kind of right. be in with. And she's really helped calm him down a bunch. <laughs> As you see, he still gets pretty excited. He is still a zebra, so All right. you can see his good zipper tail he's got there. That's a really cool pattern on his tail in there. It looks like a zipper. It's kind of neat. That's unique that Zacchaeus has. Very cool. Well, if you guys want, we also have our mini cow over in our petting area. We can go over there and take a look at uh, yeah, Moses. Let's, let's do that. And we have a question. Is it a zebra or a zonkey? This is a zebra and a donkey. We have a donkey <laughs> at the Creation Museum, isn't that correct? Yep, we have a Zorus and a donkey at the Creation Museum. Right. So we've got one of both. But this is a full-bred donkey right here, and that is a full-bred zebra over there. Right. Cool. All right, well, come on over. All right, we're going to go check out the miniature cow, is that correct? That's right. All right, we're going to make our way here to the miniature cow, so... If any of you have any questions, feel free to comment, and we'll answer them here today. We are making our way over to the miniature cow, and feel free to visit arkencounter.com for any questions you might have. kind of thing I didn't point out with Zacchaeus. I don't even notice he was smiling and mouthing a lot. Uh huh. One of the things zebras do is they, they greet and meet each other by nips and stuff. So oh, kind yeah. of like we do a handshake, they do this little nipping thing. Which is fine if you're a zebra, but it's not always pleasant if you're a keeper. Right. I think I prefer a handshake for, for me personally. Alright, we're making our way to the miniature cow here. This is the petting zoo area of the Ararat Rid Zoo that we're entering here at this time. And we're going to check out some of the animals here. So this is our petting area. And I, while we're here, I'm going to point out this fantastic entrance feature we had added to the ARC uh, petting area. So it was built in-house and designed in-house with wood peg and beam. It's a really nice structure that provides shade for our entrance for the guests and the animals. Yeah, that is new. 
But we do have a pretty sizable petting area. We have 23 different goats in here. And uh, for example, this one here, this is Manassas. And she is a, a La Mancha goat. A lot of people ask us, well, how come you're, you cut the ears off your goats? We don't cut the ears off. That's actually a breed, so they're bred to have no ears. And uh, we also mark ours so that all the blue-collared ones are boys and purple-collared ones are girls. So they're uh -huh. color-coordinated for the guests so they can see, you know, whether they have a boy or girl that they're interacting with. And their name tag is also on the collar, so it's kind of a really neat feature for the guests to be able to see the name, know if it's a boy or girl. Right. And then Asher... The old gray one over there, he's an alpine uh, Nubian mix. The uh, real floppy-eared ones are the Nubians, like uh, Zebulon over there. Oh, <laughs> that's Issachar, I am sorry. This is Zebulon laying down over here. And then as you can see where the popular corner is right now, we're in the process of working uh, and seeing how our mini cow Moses, which we affectionately call Moses, or his name is Moses, we affectionately call him Moses, rather. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> <laughs> He's coming with you, Kim. Oh, <laughs> now, mini cows are becoming a little more popular right now because they have a um, they're about a third to a quarter the size of your full size steer right which means they take about 30 percent less grazing pasture they produce about 40 percent less uh, manure and uh, they still produce a really good solid beef so now obviously here at the ark petting area we're not concerned about that but that is why one of these guys are that's why the mini cows are getting pretty common sure a little more popular now they're also more highly expensive because they're specially bred to be that way. Right. Brittany, you want to tell them what the mix is for Moses? So he's actually a mix between three different miniature breeds. He's a mix between a miniature Dexter, miniature Hereford, and miniature Brahma. How old is Moses? He is a year old. He just turned a year in June, I think. A year in June. So is that as big as Moose's will grow? Uh, he'll probably gain a couple more pounds, but he's pretty much as tall as he'll get. He's probably around 300 pounds now, and his, his father was 450. So mm -hmm. he's got a little bit of bulking up to do. Um, but as you can see, we're working with him a lot in the petting area to keep him social. And it'd be a really cool feature to be able to keep him added into here. Right. Now, the, also, the mini cows, they have a lifespan of 20 plus years. So, uh, being that he's a baby, he's going to, they're still a really young cow, he's going to be with us for a long time. Right. Very unique opportunity to come see the mini, miniature cow and get your picture taken and all that. And we also have one live exhibit on the ship on the second deck. And uh, Moses is one of our stars up there as well. He goes up and rides the elevator up to the second deck and. Sure. Gets involved in interacting with our guests on the second deck also. Right. And he, since he's the only cow we got, we did introduce him uh, to Ahava here. Ahava is the old, came in by himself as well. So these two are good buddies, and they actually live together. They don't stay in the petting area with everybody else. Uh-huh. So since Ahava came in by himself, the same time that Moses came in, we put these two together, and, and they paired up really, really well. So they're buds. Best friends. <laughs> That's cool. So now these uh, Moses then getting back to him, he's also been dehorned, so he would normally he would normally have horns. Right. Uh, so he's been dehorned, which is also beneficial for the petting area, and uh, he's also um, working on his disposition. Kim over there is one of our keepers, Kimberly and uh, Kimberly Hobner, and she's been working with him out here in the petting area. Mm -hmm. We have some other obstacles, so she's been kind of, we start off by bringing him out on a lead rope and kind of kind of showing him where to walk and how to walk around and right. not get himself into trouble. And that way too, he slowly and can gradually meet the guests. 
got really excited this morning when he came out and he started running around and <laughs> kind of scared the kids a little bit. Chasing all the goats Chasing around. Chasing all of them around. Oh, they loved it though. It was, they did. This they is, loved it. <laughs> that was uh, enrichment for the goats as well. Right. Well, very cool. Well, thank you for the opportunity to see these animals here today. So, if any of you, again, have any questions related to the ARC, feel free to go to arcencounter.com. Uh, there's ticket information, more information about the Air Red Ridge Zoo there. Um, there's also information about the camel and donkey rides that you can have here. So, look, make sure to check that out if you're coming here. That's a very unique experience. You can ride a camel or a donkey with the ARC in the background and great uh, video or picture opportunity with that so and it's right now it's really nice weather not too not too hot so it's supposed to be pretty cool for the next few days Trying and to figure out how to get to the apple he loves apples that's his favorite treat got a mouthful <laughs> Well, guys, thanks for coming out and uh, showing off our animals for us. We really appreciate the media team here as well and all that you guys do. So thank you so much to the Facebook Live team and media here for Answers in Genesis. We appreciate you guys as well. Thanks, Matt, Brittany, and Kimberly. Appreciate it. We'll end off here today and look forward to seeing you when you come.